Ectomorph, the endurance build. If you've ever been told you look like you need to eat more, congratulations. You're built for survival in ways most people aren't. Ectomorphs have narrow shoulders, long limbs, and lean frames that make heat their friend and movement easier. Their higher surface area to mass ratio allows them to cool off faster and stay active longer, which is why they dominate distance running, swimming, and just about anything that demands stamina over size. Metabolically, their bodies burn fuel like efficient engines. Little storage, but exceptional mileage. This design traces back to early hunter-gatherers who chased prey for hours under relentless sun. Overheating meant death, and the lighter frames won that race. Today, that same physiology makes ectomorphs naturally good at sports that punish heavier builds, long-distance running, cycling, and endurance training. They recover quickly, handle heat better than most, and can move for hours without feeling weighed down. Sure, they may struggle to add bulk, but what they lack in visible muscle, they make up for in persistence. When everyone else stops to catch their breath, the ectomorph is still moving, proving that endurance always outlasts size. Mesomorph, the power build. If ectomorphs are built to last, mesomorphs are built to dominate. They have broad shoulders, strong chests, and naturally defined muscle, even when they haven't been near a gym in months. Their bodies carry a higher ratio of fast-twitch muscle fibers, the kind that explode into motion, and their hormonal balance favors growth and recovery. That's why they gain muscle and strength almost by accident. In today's world, they're the ones who excel at sprinting, gymnastics, and just about any sport where acceleration matters more than endurance. Evolution shaped that power for a reason. In early human groups, these were the defenders and hunters, the ones who threw spears, built shelters, and carried the load when survival demanded quick action. The trade-off is maintenance. Mesomorphs can overtrain or burn out faster than other builds if they don't balance training with recovery. Their bodies respond intensely to stimulus, good or bad, which means their biggest strength is also their biggest test, learning when to push and when to rest instead. Endomorph the durable build. Endomorphs are the reason humanity didn't starve to death. They have wider frames, softer builds, and metabolisms that treat every calorie like it might be the last. What looks like slow metabolism today was once the ultimate survival feature, the ability to store energy efficiently and endure long stretches without food. In ancient winters or famines, the endomorph's body didn't struggle as much as others. It endured. That same physiology translates to modern strength. Endomorphs excel at powerlifting, contact sports, and any task that rewards sheer force over finesse. Their lower center of gravity gives them balance and stability, and their thicker muscles can handle serious load. They're built for heavy work, not delicate movement. In a modern world where food never runs out, their energy-saving system sometimes works too well. But while society might criticize the build, biology doesn't. The endomorph's body is a fortress, stable, reliable, and mighty, long after the quick sprinters have burned out. Compact build, the tenacious. Compact builds prove that strength isn't about size. It's about efficiency. Shorter limbs and dense muscle give these bodies an incredible power-to-weight ratio. They can generate force efficiently because every inch of their frame contributes to movement instead of drag. That's why they shine in CrossFit, weight training, wrestling, and any sport where raw output matters more than reach. Evolution favored this frame in colder or rugged regions, where staying warm and carrying heavy loads were survival skills, not gym goals. Their shorter limbs reduce heat loss, and their denser muscle fibers make them natural lifters. The kind of people who once hauled stones and firewood and now move furniture alone without breaking a sweat. The only real drawback is reach. What they gain in stability, they lose in range. But when it comes to sheer functional strength, the compact build doesn't just hold its own. It anchors the team. Tall Lanky Build The Sentinel Tall Lanky Builds are built to see what's coming before anyone else does. Long limbs, narrow frames, and higher centers of gravity make them natural observers, literally above the crowd. Their stride covers more ground with less effort. Their reach gives them command of the space around them, and their long legs make them natural jumpers, giving them an edge in basketball, volleyball, high jump, and pole vault. 
While their lighter muscle density means they're not built for brute force, they trade that for range and visibility. In early human groups, height meant perspective, the ability to spot danger or prey across open plains. Today, that same advantage shows up in the way tall people are often seen and treated as natural leaders. They're also the ones who can grab what's on the top shelf or fix the ceiling light without a ladder. If there's a downside, it's stability. Taller bodies also work harder to balance and absorb impact. But when it comes to reach, perspective, and presence, the lanky build always stands out. Small frame build, the nimble. Some people aren't compact powerhouses or tall lookouts. They're small framed, light, and quick. These are the people evolution built for agility, not dominance. Their size isn't a limitation, it's a specialty. Early on, smaller frames thrived in dense environments, forests, rocky terrain, and tight shelters, where moving quietly and efficiently mattered more than strength. They could hide faster, climb quicker, and slip through places that others couldn't. Their bodies required less fuel, and their light footing and swift movement made it easier to sneak up on prey or move undetected, a silent advantage in both hunting and survival. In today's world, that same physiology still shows up in precision and speed. They often excel at climbing, parkour, dance, and cheerleading, anything that rewards control, balance, and reaction time over raw power. And while society celebrates tall builds, Hollywood has always known the truth. Smaller frames move better on camera, fit more roles, and age slower in the spotlight. Pear-shaped build, the steadfast. If balance had a shape, this would be it. The pear build carries strength where it matters most, in the lower body. Hips, thighs, and glutes aren't just curves, they're engines. This frame was designed to move steadily, carry weight safely, and keep going when the terrain got uneven. That lower body dominance means exceptional stability and coordination. The same biomechanics that once helped early humans forage and transport supplies now make this type naturally good at cycling, hiking, dancing, and any movement that relies on balance and leg strength. Strong glutes and quads handle sustained effort efficiently. They don't waste energy, they manage it. Biologically, the fat stored around the hips and thighs acts like an internal safety net. It protects reproductive health, keeps hormones stable, and provides a long-term energy reserve. The trade-off is slower fat loss, but evolution didn't design this body to look fast. It cared about survival, modern translation, steady energy, stronger bones, stable joints, and an ability to handle long days without crashing. The gatherer build isn't fragile, it's resilient. Apple-shaped build, the protector. Some physiques were made to move the world, others were made to hold it up. With solid shoulders, strong arms, and a chest built for force, this body type was the first line of defense, whether from a predator, a storm, or just heavy lifting that had to get done. That concentration of strength around the core and upper body means real power output, the kind that translates into climbing, rowing, throwing, and any task that calls for torque instead of time. Even the thicker midsection serves a purpose. It stabilizes the spine and shields the organs during strain. What we now call core strength was really just evolution's way of making sure they didn't get crushed. You see these advantages in Olympic lifting, contact sports, and jobs that require upper body strength and trunk stability. These bodies generally handle physical stress well and can recover fast when trained right. But if that energy-dense system meets too much energy-dense food, it can lead to weight gain and heart issues. It's as if evolution never planned for modern-day comfort. Hybrid Build – The Adaptable This is the build evolution favored, the one that endured when conditions turned against everyone else. Not too lean, not too solid, not too tall, not too compact. It's the kind of body that adjusts to whatever the situation demands. Early on, that adaptability meant survival across changing climates and scarce food supplies. Now it shows up as someone who picks up new skills or sports faster than most. They build muscle when they train, lean out when they need to, and maintain stability in between. They're rarely the first to tire or fall behind. They live in the middle ground, where versatility pays off. 
Physiologically, hybrid builds manage energy well and respond predictably to training. It's why they often stay injury-free and progress quickly without strict routines. The hidden advantage is not excelling at one thing. It's being capable at nearly everything. Evolution didn't design them for show. It designed them to keep going no matter the condition. Whatever your body type is, it didn't happen by accident. Every shape was built for something, and it still carries that advantage today.